Hey guys, Q&A number 13. We got three questions as usual, so let's get straight into it here. First one is, is food allergy testing worth it? Uh, so I just wrote an article on this that should be coming out in the next little bit here. And in my opinion, I think the better way to go at least first is to pay attention to how your body responds to different foods. So basically it would be like a, a, an experiment or an N of one or N equals one experiment on how your body reacts given certain food groups. If say you have dairy and you get a little bit mucusy and you know you maybe get some inflammation in your gut and you get bloated and stuff like that, chances are that food doesn't agree with you, at least for right now. So I don't think that you need to go to someone and get food allergy testing for them to tell you that. Now, there are a ton of different foods that you can experiment with. And if say even, you know, you drink coffee and it doesn't agree with your stomach or you have some weed and you get, you know, bloated and um, whatever, whatever the food may be, I think that it's more useful to do kind of more of a hands-on personal approach. Now, you can get food allergy testing if you'd like to. What I have found though is that foods that you typically eat very commonly tend to sometimes show up in food allergy testing. So say you eat a lot of blueberries or like you put lemon, squeeze fresh lemon into your water each day. A lot of the times those foods show up on a food allergy test just because you're, you could be just over consuming them or you just consume them a lot. So you might have a minor sensitivity built up to it. So in my opinion, I think it's, it's uh, a more useful approach, also a cheaper approach to just, um, do it on your own and, and experiment and see what works and what doesn't. But I mean, if you wanted to go the food allergy testing route, you could do it. I just find if you get something back and it says, you know, I'm allergic to eggs, does that mean that you don't eat eggs for the rest of your life? Or, you know, um, so it's going to be a trial and error process and say you're more stressed out. It might be a time where you're not tolerating foods as well and stuff. There are just so many factors. So, um, in my opinion, experimentation, personal experimentation is the best way to go with that. Number two, white rice versus brown rice, which one is better? So it, it depends. There's nothing wrong with white rice. Um, there's nothing wrong with brown rice either. Really? If, say you need a little more fiber in your diet, you might want to go with some brown rice. If you're getting lots of fiber, uh, white rice would be okay. Or if you just prefer white over brown or vice versa. Um, I eat white just because I like it more, but if I'm out and brown rice is the only option, I'll go with brown. Um, I'm not too picky with it. Now there are, some people say that there are things called phytates and brown rice that bind and bind to minerals in the body and impair mineral, mineral absorption, but I think that that's nitpicky and I don't think that, um, I don't think it's really worth looking too far into. So uh, I would just say eat whichever one you enjoy more. Um, there aren't a whole, like there's a little more vitamin and, and nutrients available from the brown rice, but then again, if you're thinking about the phytates that bind to them, um, maybe it cancels themselves out. I don't really know. I think just, just go with what you prefer and what you like to eat. Number three, how can I cook or use coconut milk in different ways? So I like to take a bowl of fruit and pour a little bit of coconut milk over it and it kind of creates like this, um, it's kind of like milk, but it's like berries and milk or you know strawberries, whatever type of fruit that you enjoy with milk. And if you keep the coconut milk in the fridge also, you can scoop it into say the rice cooker and make a curry. I really like doing that. Or you can just keep it keep it out and uh, pour in however much you'd like to the rice cooker and uh, create a little curry that way. Um, you can use coconut milk in a smoothie. You could use it in all sorts of different types of baking. A lot of different recipes now are calling for coconut milk as opposed to say um, cow's, cow's milk or cow's dairy if you don't tolerate it all that well. So tons of different ways to use coconut milk. Um, experiment with it and then also you can look up recipes online and see how you can incorporate it that way. So that's it for today. Three quick ones. Uh, if you have any questions for future Q&As, hit me up and I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching guys. See ya.